February's almost over, so it's time for another podcast. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining. My name is Amy, also known as Any Knits here on YouTube and on Instagram. I'm a knitter and talk about all things knitting. And today we have a end of the month podcast episode where I'm gonna talk about everything I worked on this month in February, including some finished objects like this Moby sweater that I'm wearing and some works in progress, some new projects that I started as well as some new yarn that I got. I cannot believe that February is almost over. It's crazy how just, <laughs> February being a few days less than the other months, like 28 days versus 30 or 31, makes it seem so much shorter for some reason. I feel like this month flew by. I don't even know what happened when it was time to look back at my knitting progress and see what I finished or got done. There surprisingly was a lot, so there's definitely a lot to share. You guys are probably looking at what I'm wearing today. So what I'm wearing is also my first finished object. This is the Moby sweater by Petite Knit. It was one of her more recent designs, um, has a lot of cabling and structure, or excuse me, texture, and it, this was a really fun knit. I had so much fun. I finished it way faster than I thought it was going to, so I can't wait to dive into all the details of this sweater with you guys. So just a quick overview of the sweater pattern if you're not familiar with it. This is a drop shoulder design. It's a like heavy DK weight knit. So I knit it using one of the suggested yarns which was Double Sunday. So Double Sunday is a DK weight merino non superwash wool by Sandness Garn. I used the color white here and you hold it with one strand of silk mohair. This is Sandness Garn's tin silk mohair in the color natural. You can see there's a little bit of color variation between the mohair and the white. You put them together and you get whatever this is. I mean, it looks pretty homogenous in the sweater. I wouldn't say there's any like major visual differences between the mohair and the double sundae. Just some thoughts on the yarn. I really enjoyed working with this yarn. I was a little worried at first with the mohair that we would lose some stitch definition because you know, this sweater is all about the cables. It's all about the stitches. So stitch definition is really important. But I think because the needle size is maybe smaller than what one would normally use with, you know, a DK weight held with a mohair, it sort of tightened up the stitches and really allowed the stitch definition to shine. I would not say that the mohair really affected any of the stitch definition. I think it looks pretty crisp and overall was very impressed with the yarn combination. This double sundae is so soft. Sunday, which is their fingering weight merino wool, is one of my all-time favorite yarns to use. It is so soft and like buttery smooth and this double sundae is no different. It feels just like a silky buttery superwash wool but it doesn't have superwash which um, I think is really cool how they got that nice texture without the superwash. Um, one thing to note about the double sundae, I found it a little bit splitty, nothing major, but it definitely is a little bit like looser spun than other yarns I've used. If you can just see there, um, that's just holding it pretty like normal. So you can see that it has like kind of loose spinning with the plies and I think that's why I found it a little bit splitty. Um, but holding it with the silk mohair was really nice. I don't think the silk mohair is necessary for the sweater. If you knit it in just a DK weight wool, it would look just as gorgeous without the extra halo or the fuzz. So talking about construction for this sweater, this is a drop shoulder design. You start in the back and you work short rows while following a cable chart to create this like angled shoulder line if you guys can see there and you work down the back and then you pick up along that shoulder line and then you work each of the shoulders separately you cast on stitches here right under the neck and then you work flat until you join it all together in the round right under the armpit you pick up the collar at the end you pick up the sleeves at the end the body follows a chart as well as the sleeves there are very wide ribbing sections at the ends of the cuffs as well as the end of the body. I'll just show you guys what I can that's in frame. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so pretty standard drop shoulder design. You just have to follow the chart along with it. I went into a lot of detail in my previous two podcasts on my experience with the charts as well as the sleeves and details such as the collar. So I'm not really going to dive into a lot of that today. If you're interested, you can feel free to go back to look at those other videos. But what I am going to talk a lot about today with this sweater is blocking. Now, as I was knitting this sweater, it was very, I want to say like tight or like the finish project, the finished fabric, looked a lot smaller than maybe what I was expecting. I think naturally the cables will bunch up on each other as well as this mock cable panel. The cables are separated with these pearl columns that go down and as I was knitting it, those pearl columns really compressed on themselves and were basically invisible. So. When the sweater was all said and done before blocking, it was very tight. The suggested positive ease on this sweater is about six to eight inches. And when I tried it on, I would probably say it had maybe like two inches or less of positive ease to a point where I was kind of concerned because it was not flattering. You know, it was hugging all of my curves and that wasn't really how I wanted it to look. I wanted this nice oversized cozy pullover and I had faith because I had gauge swatched before starting this project and my gauge swatch was the suggested gauge for the pattern. So I knew that as long as my knitting was following the knitting tension in my gauge swatch that the finished sweater should end up to the finished dimensions as suggested. So although I was worried, I just went along and blocked it. So I filled up my tub with room temperature to cool water, filled it with um, a few dollops of wool wash. I used the Eucalyptus eucalyptus wool wash and I let this sweater soak. I think I let it soak for like a good hour. I was watching some of Andrea Mowry's podcasts and she always recommends like a very long soak just to really ensure that all of the fibers soak up as much moisture and water as possible to really allow them to bloom and relax. Um, a lot of wool wash bottles suggest maybe 15 minutes of soaking to 30 minutes. I think mine only suggests like 15 minutes of soaking. So I let it sit in the water for like a good hour before um, gently wringing it out and then pinning it on my boards. And as soon as I was taking it out of the bathtub, I could tell already the stitches had relaxed immensely. These pearl ridges had immediately opened up. These cable columns had widened significantly and I was very excited because I knew that this sweater was already on the way to being the size that I wanted it to be. Just for a comparison to see how my finished sweater compared to the finished dimensions of the pattern, I actually pinned out the like suggested finish width for my size on my blocking mats. I have blocking mats that have a grid on them, uh, one inch grid marks so I could count out how many inches it was supposed to be wide. I just put two pins in there so I could see it. And then when I laid down the sweater on the blocking boards, I sort of flattened it out and sort of saw where it sat in reference to those two pins. And it was right to size, like it went up right to the pins. I didn't have to do much like major stretching. It was more just like flattening it out, making sure all the edges were straight and, you know, lengthening the sleeves, like flattening them out and pinning those as well. So blocking fixed everything. I don't know if it's the yarn. I don't know if it's the cables. I mean, it's probably both. I don't know if it was more the yarn or more the cabling. I have a feeling more of the cabling was affecting the size before blocking, um, but I'm very happy with the final dimensions. Just so you guys can see how it fits on me now, we have a lot of extra ease around the bust and the underarm. It has that very relaxed fit. You can see how it drapes over my shoulders really nicely. We have a very clean join between the sleeves and the underarm area, which I love. I always um, pay attention to picking up the stitches to make sure I have a neat join there. And you can see how it hangs on my body. Like I'll put my hand, this is like where my actual body is and you can see how much ease there is compared to my bust size on either side. So we have a very flowy, loose sweater and I've already worn this like three or four times since finishing it last week. Like it's been so cozy to put on. It also really got cold here in New England over the past week. We've had a pretty mild winter and suddenly this past week has been very cold. We got some snow and ice and I've just needed to bundle up a little bit more. So this sweater has been perfect to throw on. I also 
was really happy with how the sleeves turned out. I was talking a little bit in my last podcast about how the suggested sleeve length in the pattern was really long, at least compared to other sweaters that I've knit before in similar styles. They seemed long. So I shortened the sleeve by about three and a half inches compared to the suggested length in the pattern and they've turned out perfect. I was worried if maybe blocking would widen the sleeve and therefore shorten the sleeve, but I think the sleeve got longer, if anything. Like I don't think the sleeves were this long before blocking and now they're sort of going like past my wrist over here. I think that's mostly because the body widened so much that you know, because it's a drop shoulder, the body width is gonna affect the sleeve length. So that's where we're at with the sleeves. They may shorten with wear, um, but I'm super happy with them. Even if they grow a little bit or shrink a little bit, I'll be content with those sleeve lengths. One thing about blocking the sweater is laying it out flat, you know, kind of like this. The fold points end up right along the cable lines of the sleeves. So these cables did not really open up as much as the cables on the body. You can probably see that the width of these cables and like the pearl ridges next to them are not as open as the body. I kind of would like them to open up a little bit, which again, I think may shorten the sleeve length slightly. If I were to do that, I think I would have to block like just the sleeves. So maybe soak each of the sleeves in like a separate bowl of water and then pin them out so they lay flat like this just to open up the cables. Maybe I want to do that. I probably won't. It's one of those extra steps that I think doesn't really matter. And I think the cable pattern looks really nice in general. So yeah, that's a wrap up of my Moby sweater. I finished this in like exactly a month. When I finished it, I checked the date. It was February 15th and I had started this on January 15th. So exactly one month of pretty monogamous knitting, although I did have a couple projects ongoing at the same time. This was the only sweater that I was really working on all at once, so I think that really helped go through quickly. Also, like the pattern, the stitch pattern was really like captivating and addicting. Like I kept wanting to do one more row, one more row, and yeah, it helped it go by really quickly. I thought the pattern was pretty well written. I have done a lot of petite knit patterns before and they are pretty helpful. There was a lot of details about different parts like details on picking up for the collar, details on picking up for the back shoulder, but like I said in my previous video, not a lot of details on the sleeves. I don't really know why the details for the sleeves were not comparable to the details for the other pieces, but I still think the pattern was pretty easy to follow. This is my first major charted pattern and I had a lot of fun with it. I don't think I'll be doing any patterns similar to this anytime soon. This is kind of one of those like one-off patterns for me where there's a lot of detail, a lot going on, and now I'm excited to go back to some of my regular stockinette, more simple pieces, but I'm really enjoying this one, really enjoying wearing it. So yeah, that's my Moby. Okay, so my next finished object is this beanie. This is the Bothy hat by Isolde Teague. Now this hat is for my husband, Nick. He loves all the beanies that I knit for him and he wears his Oslo hat all the time, but he really wanted a hat that was more form-fitting to the crown of his head. So I thought that this ribbed beanie would be the perfect pattern for it. The thing that really drew me to picking out this pattern were the crown details. So I will just show you that up close while I go over the um, details of this knit piece. So this is a two by two ribbed hat. It's knit um, bottom up, you know, pretty normal hat construction. And it is a DK weight knit. The suggested needle size is a 3.25 millimeter needle. And that is what I used. And my yarn choice was Filcolana Arweta in the color Red Squirrel. That's a fingering weight sock yarn. So I held it double to get the DK weight yarn for this hat. So this is Filcolana Arweta. This is also one of my favorite yarns to use. It is so nice for the price. I did get this on my trip to Sweden last year. Filcolana is really hard to find in the US. I don't really know many retailers who retail it and if you can find it online, it's usually pretty marked up to account for shipping from overseas and stuff. Um, so I was lucky to pick a lot of this up while I was 
in Denmark and Sweden last fall. I think it retailed for like less than five US dollars a skein. This is a hundred grams of fingering weight 80-20, so 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon. This color red squirrel was one that Nick picked out. He really likes the sort of deep earthy tone, so it's a nice like orangey rust color. And one this is like a little thing about the yarn that I noticed, but one thing that I really liked is how clean it was to use. So the center pull is already taken out for you. And when you take off the label, because I was holding the yarn double, I had to take off the label so I could grab the other end. I'm hoping it is like this with this ball, um, but I'm gonna take off the label and you'll see why I think it's so cool. This is just like the neatest ball of yarn I've ever seen like wound up like fresh from the store. The center pull is ready for you to go. The other end is super neatly wrapped around. Also just like the overall winding pattern of the skein. It's just the little things that I'm really fascinated by. Maybe that's not important to you, but I really like that in the Arweta. So I did do tubular cast on for this hat. This is a two by two tubular cast on, and I really like how it turns out. I think it looks really neat. You obviously can still like see it. Like it's not invisible per se, like compared to one by one, like tubular cast off for the two by two, it definitely has more like visibility, but I think it looks nicer than like a horizontal line that I would have gotten with a long tail cast on. So I learned a new skill with this, definitely had to do it a few times and um, overall very pleased with the result. This is a single folded hat brim. So I used exactly two skeins of the Arweta, so exactly a hundred grams of the yarn which meant that I literally had like this much left. <laughs> I was kind of playing yarn chicken with the end of this hat although I do have like another ball of this yarn I really didn't want to break into it so um, this is what 100 grams of sock yarn gets in the bothy hat. This is how it looks. I really like it. Now it makes me want to make one for myself. I mean the crown is really pretty. I'm just gonna pull it farther down my head so you guys can see the crown when it's all stretched out. And then I'm gonna do an awkward bend so you guys can see it. Okay, that was weird, but <laughs> gotta show off the hat somehow. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cute. The decreases were funky to say the least. They were a type of decrease I've never used before. I think they're called cable decreases both a right and a left cable decrease, like a, okay, sorry, I'm remembering the term now from the pattern. I think it's a double cable decrease. So you actually decrease two times within one like pass of the stitch and it's cabled so you get these cool twists. It was a lot, <laughs> not gonna lie. It was definitely like a new skill that was a little bit challenging for me. Not your basic knit two together, but I really like how it ended up in the final hat and I surprised Nick with it. He did not know that I was working on it. It took about two weeks to make. Um, I worked on it while he was at work at the office, while I was working from home during my free time, like breaks and stuff. So yeah, very impressed with the Bothy hat pattern. We'll definitely be making more of these. The pattern comes in a few sizes, I believe baby, child, and two different adult sizes. This is the adult small to medium. There is also an adult large to XL. I had originally cast on for the largest size, which was the large through XL, but it was too big. So this is the small through medium. It fits Nick really well. It fits me really well. So yeah, that's the Bothy hat. All right, we finished a lot of projects this month. I guess some of them are smaller. So I also finished these socks. These are my hobby No Shades of Grey Challenge socks that I made with some gifted yarn from Hobby for their No Shades of Grey Challenge. The challenge started back in January and the prompt was to knit something with four or more colors that weren't gray, hence the No Shades of Grey title. So these are the Bear Paw Socks by Andrea Mowry. This is by now the third pair that I've knit of these socks and I've had a lot of experience with the pattern. I made a couple pairs for Christmas gifts at the end of last year and now this pair. So it's a DK weight sock pattern and I used Hobby's rainbow four ply sock wool. So this is the sock wool. It is a superwash sock yarn, a 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide 
and it's fingering weight so I held it double which allowed me to do these cool marled stripes throughout the whole pattern. This pattern is a toe up sock so you start at the toe and you work through and then you do a flegal heel which I have in yellow and then you continue up the cuff. I don't have all the yarns with me right now but I had a bunch of different colors from Hobby. I tried to stay mostly in the blue range. I kind of like the idea of doing sort of a monochromatic piece with like a pop of contrasting color. So I had a bunch of blues and greens, as you can see in the sock here, and I chose the color Delicate Yellow as my contrast. And I think it turned out pretty cool. Now, I feel like as I was knitting this yarn up, it felt thicker than a fingering weight. So I was holding a double, which meant I would have a GK weight, but I don't know, compared to other GK weight yarns that I've used, this definitely felt a little bit on the thicker side. And I think because of that, my sock ended up a little bit larger than I was hoping, especially after soaking and blocking them, they did grow a little bit. So there are they are a little on the large side. I have tried them on and they'll definitely be really cozy, thick house socks. I don't know if they would fit in many of my shoes, maybe like my big winter boots that are like on the larger size they would fit into, but overall I am really impressed with the final result. I think they're cute. I like the contrasting of the toe and the yellow band, how it sort of matches the heel, it matches the little band at the cuff. I did do two by two tubular cast off at the end pretty loosely, although it's on the navy, so it's pretty hard to see, but it didn't give me like a weird line. I had tried the stretchy bind off, the Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off for the previous pair of bear paw socks that I made, and it worked. I just didn't love the look of it. It looks a little sloppy to me, so, I am glad that I learned how to do the two by two tubular cast off. Remember, I also learned how to do the two by two tubular cast on. So I'm just becoming a uh, well versed in the tubular cast offs and ons. But yeah, for the striping pattern on this sock, I didn't really have a plan. I knew I wanted to do some sort of marling. So after starting at the toe and going into where the marling technique started, I basically did like a random number of rounds for each big stripe block. But every time I would switch to a new color, I would cut one strand, the strand that was from the previous color stripe, and then attach a new one and then hold that for two stripes. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys can see like this yellow started here and then I cut the navy and then added the light blue. But then when I was done with this stripe, I cut the yellow and then added the darker blue and so on. It did result in a lot of ends to weave in. That was definitely the worst part of the project, but I just powered through and put on some TV while I weaved in all the ends and yeah, overall was a lot. I should probably learn a way to sort of knit over ends like that, especially when doing these small striped projects, just because it's a lot of work to weave in all those ends at the end, but here we are. <laughs> Another thing with the DK weight socks is that they knit up so quickly, like very fast. I had finished my second sock in like two days and that was just super fast compared to fingering weight socks. So although they knit up really quickly and are pretty easy to knit, I still don't think they're the most like practical to wear just because of how thick they are. I'm excited to go back to a fingering weight sock after finishing these. I actually got Andrea Mowry's other sock pattern, the DRK Everyday Socks that are a fingering weight, her first version of these um, in a fingering weight. So it's the same toe up, style but with two by two rib and I've never tried that pattern before so I'm excited to see how that turns out. Okay so I have a few new cast-ons which is really exciting to share with you guys. So I am starting a little sweater project with two of my very close friends. They are learning how to knit which is super exciting. I mean I would say they definitely already know how to knit but they are knitting their first sweaters and so we all decided as a group that it would be really fun to do kind of like a mini knit along with ourselves and all knit the same sweater at the same time. So we decided to 
to cast on the town sweater by Ozetta. The town sweater is a bottom up, very beginner friendly drop shoulder design. I think the bottom up construction just lends itself to being beginner friendly. So you don't have a lot of stuff going on at the beginning of the sweater. Um, so you knit in the round bottom up and then you split for the front and the back panels at the underarm, you knit those flat. I think there's very simple decreases around the neck and then you pick up for the collar. It's a folded collar and then you pick up for the sleeves as well. So this is what I have so far. This is a worsted weight pattern. So the yarn that we are using is Wool of the Andes by Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes worsted weight. And we picked this yarn because it was very inexpensive. I think it was less than $4 a ball. And this is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And they had such a large color selection. Like, I don't even know how many colors. There had to be at least 100. So many really beautiful colors. They had a ton of heathered colors. So the color I'm using here is Crane Heather. This is a cooler beige. I would probably say it's like a grayish, like sort of a gray beige. It is heathered so you can see like the color nuances within the yarn, which I think lend to a really beautiful fabric. You can buy these in 50 gram balls. So you get about, where's the yardage? You get 110 yards per 50 grams and it matched the gauge of the sweater pattern. So, oh. This is what we got so far. So like I said before, it's knit bottom up. So I cast it on for the ribbing. I did a tubular cast on, another tubular cast on. I know I would say I'm an expert now. I've done it so many times that I actually can do it now without looking up the instructions, which I think is a big step for any knitting technique. So after, what is it? Three or four projects involving tubular cast on, we are, we are becoming quite familiar with it. So. Nothing too much to show here. We have one by one rib band. I just started the stock and knit portion. This is the bottom. This will get knit up until my underarm and then I'll separate for the rest of the pattern. So very fun little knit along I'm doing with my friends. So I'm excited to see their finished sweaters as well. But yeah, I will say I'm very impressed with this yarn quality. I was a little hesitant or maybe weary because of the price, you know, for what you get. I was like, oh, maybe this may not be the best yarn, but I'm, I'm highly impressed. I've knit this much. Maybe this is not enough to tell, but I don't know. I think the stitches are really even. The yarn is very smooth. It feels really soft. It's not like harsh or like scratchy at all. Again, I said with the color choices, there are so many colors to pick from, which is awesome. So I think I may use this yarn again if I'm looking for like a good value sweater. I ordered 10 balls of this for the sweater size that I'm making, which means that this sweater was like less than $40, which for a 100% wool sweater, that's really good. <laughs> okay, the next project that I casted on was one that I talked about last week, and that is the Oopbot sweater or cardigan. I don't know why I keep calling it sweater. It, the pattern name is just Oopbot or Oopbo, and it is a cardigan knit in Icelandic wool, a la Foss Lopi, and I am doing it as part of a knitting class at one of my local yarn stores. They are running this class and we're sort of knitting this cardigan along together. It has a lot going on that's new to me, so I finally got to cast on. I actually had my first class this morning and it was really fun. So let me show you what I have so far. I'll put up a picture of the finished cardigan from Lopi Magazine. My color choices are pretty much identical to the magazine, except like replace the beige body with this beautiful blue indigo color. So I'm using the white and the sort of gray for the border, and then this blue is going to be the body. So <laughs> I just launched that across the room. So <laughs> this is Alafas Lopi. It is, is Texas bulky weight. 100% Icelandic wool, very rustic, very like loosely spun, if you guys can see, has a lot of texture, and here's what I cast it on. Ta-da! Yeah? Notice anything? Yeah? You see the tubular cast on? <laughs> <laughs> so this cardigan is knit bottom up in the round and then steaked. 
So that's why I'm taking the class because there is a whole lot that I've never done before, including the bottom up sweater construction, the whole steaking concept. I know I'm gonna have to, this is the body panel, so I'm gonna have to knit the body up until the underarm and then I put it aside and then I do each of the sleeves separately all while following the color work chart. So there's a lot going on with this pattern. Today's first class, we cast it on and the teacher went over all of the different techniques that we should expect while going forward in the pattern. She talked a lot about color work, which I have done before, but I don't have a ton of experience in. So I think it may be a little bit more of a challenge than I was expecting, which is good. I'm like excited that this is gonna be like a, a brain stretching project. Um, in terms of the color work, she talked a lot about how to make sure that the tension is even, making sure that the floats are flat and not pinching any of the fabric in any of the places. We talked about carrying floats. If there are long stretches of one singular color, we do have to carry the yarn in the back a specific way so we don't end up with huge floats. And she did suggest doing two-handed stranded color work, which I've never done before. So that is when you hold each of the yarn colors in each of your hands. And so you throw the yarn for one color with one hand and then you pick continental with the other color in your other hand. So it's like knitting English style and continental at the same time. And she suggested that, and I'm gonna give it a try. I've never done it before. It may end in absolute disaster, <laughs> but I am excited to start it. It does help that this is a bulky weight yarn, so it is gonna be knit on six millimeter needles, which compared to a lot of projects that I've been making, that's pretty large, so it should go by pretty quickly. In terms of the color work chart, you only ever do two stranded color work at a time. Like it doesn't go more than two colors in one round. So that should help as well. In terms of knitting, I knit English style. So I throw my yarn over the needle. And while I'm talking about it, I have been getting a few questions about how I knit left-handed. I've been mentioning it a lot in my podcasts and stuff. And if you knit right-handed, the concept of left-handed knitting might be new to you. Some people also call it mirror knitting. So I'm just gonna overlay like a video of me doing like a basic knit stitch just to show you, like I hold my yarn in my left hand, but I throw English style. So I'm throwing the yarn with my left hand. I'm working the stitches from left to right off of the right needle and I'm wrapping the working yarn around the left needle. So if you are a right-handed knitter, this is just gonna look like a mirror image of what you are used to. So maybe that clarifies. I know I've talked about it a lot, but visually it probably makes so much more sense just to show you guys how I actually knit. So yeah, that's a little bit more about my knitting style. So doing the two-handed like continental and English at the same time color work will be pretty challenging, but I'm up for the challenge. Our assignment at, after today's class was to go do the first, like do the body up until the underarms and do the sleeves. And we'll bring all three of those pieces to the next class and then connect them in the round all together. So I have about a month to get that done. Again, it's pretty chunky, bulky knit, so I'm not expecting it to take too long. Like, I think a month will be plenty of time to finish that piece. So yeah, that's some progress on my Oopbot cardigan. Next time you see it, it'll be bigger than this, so yeah. All right, next project on my needles. <laughs> I finished a lot of projects this month, but I still have a lot on my needles. So I am working on the Monday sweater still, but it is moving along. I somehow reached the end of the body without even knowing it. I was not expecting to finish the body this quickly, um, but here she is. Show it like this. <laughs> so I just started the ribbing. If you think it looks a little short, I still have about three inches of ribbing to go on the body. Um, so I just started that one by one rib at the bottom, but I am really enjoying the sweater. It's been super simple and mindless. The yarn is absolutely gorgeous. I'm using Saniscarn Sunday in deep marine held with Saniscarn tin silk mohair in marine blue. Let me just show you guys that yarn up close. So this is the yarn combo. We have the Santa's Garden Sunday, the super deep navy I've been absolutely loving. And then we have the tin silk mohair, not as deep and inky as the wool, but together it makes this gorgeous, very slightly variegated fabric. 
I'll show you this up close just so you can see the mohair shining through the dark wool. And like I said before, when I showed this, when I hold it up close to the camera, it does distort the color a little bit. When I hold it back here, I'm looking at like my viewfinder and this is definitely like color accurate to what I'm seeing in real life. So it's a super deep navy. I've been having a blue moment. As you can see by all of my projects, I'm definitely really channeling like my knitting color palettes. I've been super into jewel tones lately and deep winter colors as I found those suit me best. And I'm also like attracted to those colors in general. So I'm trying to stick with the cool tones, the deep tones, which is really fun. Definitely different than last year where I was knitting like all beige I'm like done with beige <laughs> I also was realizing when I was editing my last podcast I think I was wearing my beige sweater vest and like this whole room is beige this is an apartment so we can't paint the walls this is just like the generic apartment beige and this bedding is beige I picked the bedding before I knew the color of the walls of this apartment so <laughs> I don't mean to be like beige all the time but last week's or last podcast was like very beige on the eyes. So I'm trying to add more color into like the video visual for you guys. Hopefully these colorful knits will help. You know, I may add some stuff in the background, but it's kind of hard for me to kind of decorate on like doors. Maybe I'll put like a wreath up, but <laughs> just little things that don't really matter, but things that I think about occasionally. But anyway, back to the knitting. So I've been super into these blues lately. I've been loving this navy. This is the, oh, did I say what pattern it was? Okay, I think I did. This is the Monday sweater. It's a pattern by Petite Knit and it is a top-down raglan and it's just a really classic staple piece. I did a double folded collar as instructed in the pattern. The raglan has like more than one stitch going on. I think it's like a three stitch raglan, which like, is a little bit different than your basic like single stitch raglan and you knit in stockinette all the way down. It has like a pretty long ribbed band at the bottom. It'll have the same for the sleeves. So very nice meditative knit and I'm excited to have this to wear sometime. Was kind of worried that, you know, it's almost March, which means people are thinking spring, but it seems like here in Massachusetts, mother nature is like oh no it's still a deep winter like <laughs> we're getting the coldest weather that we've had pretty much all season right now so it seems like i have plenty of time to continue wearing these wool sweaters fingers crossed because i do like my wool knits a little bit more than my summer and spring knits so this is my monday sweater progress i do have a quick update on my crochet project i did start the lakeside miss cardigan from my modern crochet sweaters book and not much to show. You can see that this fabric strip is a little bit wider than the last time. So, you know, we're slowly working on it. I definitely enjoy knitting more than crochet. That's just like my personal preference. So my like draw to work on this project is like less. So progress will be pretty slow, but it's nice every once in a while if I want to pick up the crochet hook that I have this to work on. I think I have to knit this. I think I have to crochet this panel until it's like maybe twice as wide as this, and then I can move on to the next step. So yeah, I'm using the Feels Like Butter yarn by Lion Brand. This is a 100% polyester yarn. It is super soft. It's like this like chainette sort of, I don't know how to describe it. It's like very fluffy. Oh, geez, I'm not showing you guys anything. It's like very fluffy chainette yarn, kind of feels like chenille in a way. So I think it's creating a really nice soft fabric and will make a really nice cardigan. All right, let's get into some yarn acquisitions from this month. I'm very excited to show you guys these. Oh my gosh, look at how pretty they are. Okay, so let's talk about it. This is hand dyed yarn from Yarn Matter. I'll show you guys the label. Yarn Matter is a hand dyer based in Austin, Texas. This is from their Nutcracker collection. This is the color Sugar Plum Fairy on Pure Sport. So Yarn Matter dyes non-superwash wool. So this is 100% fine organic merino wool, non-superwash. I got these sport weight. I got three skeins. And this color Sugar Plum Fairy is dyed with, I'm just reading the label, it's dyed with matter and logwood. So I think she uses like natural materials to dye her yarns and 
I was just in love with this purple the like second I saw it on Instagram. I think I ordered it, pre-order was back in like around Christmas, hence the Nutcracker collection, but it just arrived here in February. I think the sport weight specifically was delayed. So since I only ordered the sport weight, it took a little while to get here, but no worries, was patiently waiting to get this and was so excited when I got it in the mail. I've said before, I don't have too many hand-dyed yarns, but I'm slowly getting into it, which is really exciting but at the same time dangerous because it's a little bit pricier than standard commercial yarn but I think the end result is like like it is worth it in a way so I got the sport weight because I want to knit the Barbara shawl by Gregoria fibers and the sport weight yarn will fit the shawl quite well I think the shawl pattern says it's a DK weight but if you actually look at the suggested yarn it ends up more as a sport weight so Three skeins will be enough to make that beautiful textured triangle wrap. I had an interest in the pattern kind of when Petite Knit Sophie Shawl was having a moment, the like very similar wide triangular scarf, but I didn't really want to knit the Sophie Shawl. I wanted something like more, a little bit more elegant or sophisticated. I found this pattern on Ravelry and fell in love with it. I think the stitch pattern is gorgeous. I think the shape of the triangle wrap, it looks really nice and cozy while still being able to be worn in a bunch of different ways like over the shoulder wrapped around the neck so i'm excited to knit that up in this yarn the yarn color i don't know if it's considered a tonal or like a semi-solid i'll just show it to you guys up close in the camera again it's this beautiful kind of warm purple i'm not too versed in like color describers but it's like a I don't know, Sugar Plum Fairy is like a nice way to describe the color. So I guess the color name is fitting, but I've been really into purples lately along with the blues that you saw. So this will be a really nice addition. I'm like really eager to cast on this project. I just am telling myself to finish a few more things before I cast this one on. So when I cast it on, I will show you guys. So yeah, this yarn is very soft for a non-superwash wool, it feels like superwash and I mean that in a good way. I know some people have differing opinions on how they like the feel of superwash, but when I talk about it, I, I mean it in a positive way. I enjoy how smooth and soft and buttery that superwash wool is. And I like how it's not super like rustic and textured feeling. So when I say that this non superwash wool feels like that, I mean it in a very nice way. It's super smooth. It feels like it's gonna be really nice against the skin, not gonna cause any irritation. I feel like it's gonna knit up just like really nicely. So for a non superwash, I know her website has a lot about like her micron count and all of her non superwash bases, which is really cool to read about. I can't really relay much of that information to you right now because I just don't remember, but I'll link her stuff down below if you wanna check it out. Really cool yarn. This month I also went to a yarn meetup in Boston, which is really fun. I got to meet up with some people that I talked to on Instagram in person, so that was really cool. And we had a little yarn swap, so everyone was encouraged to bring any excess skeins of yarn that they had in their stash wanting to get rid of, and we sort of swapped and it was chaotic and fun and messy all at the same time. We were at a coffee shop and we just dumped all of the yarn on the table and had everyone pick their favorites like round by round. So I was able to pass along some yarn that I knew I wasn't going to use anymore to someone else and other people were able to do the same thing and I got some new yarn to show you guys at no cost which was like the best part. <laughs> Okay, so one of the skeins that I got at that yarn swap was this. This is Knit Picks Hawthorne in Panatoni Speckle. It is a sock yarn, so it is 75% superwash wool and 25% polyamide. It is this cream base with speckles of blue and orange and some yellow, and I've been really craving some like speckled hand-dyed yarn. I don't actually know, like this comes from Knit Picks, so I don't know if Knit Picks hand speckles it or if it's like machine machine dyed to sort of imitate hand dyeing um, but I'm excited to make a pair of socks with this I think a sock pattern either like I 
vanilla socks would definitely look good in this yarn, but I kind of want to do something with some more texture. So I'm kind of looking into some other sock patterns that will allow the speckles of the yarn to shine, but not be too distracting from the yarn itself. So this is 100 grams, you get 357 yards. And yeah, it feels nice. To be honest, it doesn't feel as soft as this yarn, which is funny because this is a super wash. It has like, it feels a little like textured. It is a two ply, it looks like. Two ply sock yarn is not my favorite to work with. I definitely prefer four ply, I've learned, but um, I think this will be really nice to work with regardless. I also got two skeins of Wool in the Gang Al Pacino Merino. This is 60% Merino, 40% Baby Alpaca. This is the color Tweed Gray. So it is a chunky weight or bulky weight yarn, looks like two ply. It is really soft and really fluffy. I think this would make a really cute like hat or a little neck piece, like a cowl or something. So I'm excited to work with this. Should make like a pretty quick project. Again, I don't really work with bulky weight yarn very often. And I've heard a lot about the Al Pacino Merino, so I'm excited to try this out. So the last skein that I walked away with from the yarn swap was this Felicy, Felicy? I think it's Felicy, <laughs> worsted weight yarn from Knit Picks. This is a 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon worsted weight self-striping yarn. This is the colorway Vegas Baby. So really brightly colored. You're probably thinking that this is not exactly my palette, but I have an idea for what I'm gonna make with this, and that is gonna be a pair of mittens. So all these colors, when the yarn is knit up, make really like thick, stripes like color blocked stripes of these colors and the woman who brought in this ball of yarn actually had the mittens that she made with it i think she had like a bunch of skeins of the yarn and ended up with this extra but they look so cute like the pinks and the blues and the greens and the color blocked mittens looked really cute i think worsted weight is a good weight for mittens um could also make dk weight socks with this um because it has the nylon in it i think even though it's advertised as worsted weight, I can kind of see it acting as like a DK. I'll just show it up close. You can see the plies and the colors. It is super soft and I think will be really fun to work with. One ball, she said, should make a pair of mittens. So I'm gonna try to get these on my needle soon, but I have a lot going on. So <laughs> we'll see when that happens. I've kind of been craving like accessories lately. Like everyone on Instagram has been making hats and mittens and um, fingerless mittens. And I've been just like craving those like small little projects. We'll see if I get those on my needles anytime soon. <laughs> Some other upcoming knitting plans that I have are kind of knitting related, but they're more like yarn buying related, but I've been keeping an eye out on Sorella Yarn. They've been slowly announcing new colorways from their upcoming Disneyland collection, which will be open for pre-order early March. And I'm just super excited for those colors. I think I'm gonna get a sweater quantity of one. I don't know what color yet, but I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it, putting a some money to save for that and Explorer Knits and Fibers is also coming up with their National Parks collection pre-order which will also be open in March so March may be a yarn buying month because both of those dyers are they're releasing some really beautiful colors. Like I have a bunch of them saved on my Instagram. I'm trying to think of like what patterns I can knit with them. Like I said, I'm trying to get into the hand dyed yarn game. It's they're, it's just so fun to knit with all those colors and yarns. So. so that is pretty much all I have to talk about today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.